What's up guys, this is Eric Vasquez here with a brand new design tutorial for you today from designcuts.com. In this tutorial we will be designing a healthy magazine cover mock-up for Delicious Foods magazine in Photoshop. We will be using some of the amazing realistic items from the Mammoth Mock-up Template Toolkit with a few fantastic freebies from Alexic Balorikov and Zippy Pixels. These freebies are just a small sampling of the incredible high quality templates and items you will find in the complete bundle. In addition to these items, we will also be using a free typeface for our magazine cover as well. So if you're all ready to get started, then fire up Photoshop and let's begin. The first thing we're going to do here is create a new document and let's make it 8 inches by 8 inches with a resolution of 300, RGB color mode is fine, and let's go ahead and give our new document a name. So I'm going to just call this Delicious Foods Magazine Cover Design and then go ahead and click create from the bottom right. Now once you have your document made, the first thing we want to do is come up here to the file menu and go to open. Now go to the freebies folder for this tutorial and inside this folder you'll see the Alexei Balorikov subfolder where we're going to select the background PSD file. And this contains our background as well as a cool shadow effect for our mockup. So we're just going to move this tab to the side, bring this tab over here for our main document, maybe reduce it a little bit, and then select the top folder, hold shift and select the background folder, and click and drag both of these into your main document while holding the shift key. Okay, now once you've done that, you can go ahead and just close this background PSD file. Now over here in our document, we now have both of these folders as well as this background layer, which we no longer need. So I'm just going to drag that to the trash can. And then from here, let's go ahead and turn off the effects folder for a few minutes and expand the contents of this background folder inside. Now in here you can see that we have several layers and there's a few kind of strange things happening here that we need to fix. Okay, so the first thing that we want to fix here is layer 28, which is creating this sort of diagonal shadow here, but at the moment it has this lock icon next to it. So what we're going to do is click on this icon up here that says lock transparent pixels to unlock it, and then select the layer and press command control T to do a free transform. Click and drag outwards from any of the four corners of the bounding box while holding the Alt, Option, and Shift keys to scale it up until it covers the entire canvas. Now go ahead and do the same thing with layer 29. Hold the Shift key and select the Noise layer above it. Do a free transform, Command, Control, T, and then drag out while holding Alt, Option, and Shift. Okay, so we're just going to scale that up here just so that it covers our whole canvas. Now let's turn the Effects folder back on. Okay, and I'm going to hold the control key and click on the eyeball for a second and change this from yellow to just no color. Now sometimes, you know, these layer labels can come in handy, but uh, for now I'm just going to leave those off. And then click here to expand the contents of this folder. Now the first thing I'm going to do here is select this layer mask that's attached to the light and I'm going to do a free transform on it. Okay, so I'm going to click and drag outwards while holding Alt, Option, and Shift move this up a little bit here just so that it fills out the entire canvas and then go ahead and press enter or return to apply those changes. Now let's take a look inside this folder for a second here and inside we can go ahead and adjust this noise layer at the very top. We're just going to do the same thing and make sure that it fills the entire canvas here because we don't want any kind of strange lines happening from the edges of certain layers or masks. Okay and now let's come down to this effects copy folder here inside and you can see that we have this little link icon. So let's go ahead and unlink that for a second so that we can move and manipulate the mask independently from the folder. Okay, and again, we're just going to adjust this a little bit, make it large enough so that it fills out the entire canvas. Okay, and then let's go ahead and grab both of these Effect Copy and Effect Copy 2 Curves Adjustment Layers just below it, and we can now kind of move those around as well. Okay, and actually I'm going to move these maybe up and to the left a little bit more. Now let's go ahead and select this window light copy folder and I'm going to press the number one on the keyboard to drop the opacity from 44% down to 10%. Okay, and now hold the shift key and select the shadow layer above and press command control T to do a free transform. You can simply click OK here to bypass that and now we can just move this shadow around. Now this is supposed to sort of be a shadow from a nearby window, uh, just adding a little bit of extra realism to our composition. And once we begin adding some elements to this scene here, you guys will start to see how that really comes into play. 
Okay, now let's go ahead and close this folder since we've made all of our adjustments here that we need to. And I'm going to select the background group folder, come down here to the adjustment layer icon, and let's go ahead and add a solid color adjustment layer. Now for the fill color, I'm going to use the hex value 44503E, which is this nice sort of olive green color. And then go ahead and click OK on the keyboard and change the blending mode from normal to multiply. Now expand the contents of the background folder and let's drag and drop this inside at the very top. So you should now just have these two folders here. Now let's go back up to the file menu and choose open. And this time we're going to go back one step here to the freebies and we'll open the one PSD from Zippy Pixels. Now this is an A4 magazine mock-up and one of many really cool and realistic looking mock-ups that you guys will get in the full bundle. But for now we're just going to be using this one for today's tutorial. Okay, so again, I'm just going to move this to the side of our main composition just so you can see the two windows side by side here. And inside of this magazine mock-up, if I close this folder, you'll see you just have the A4 book and the background. So I'm only concerned with the A4 book, so let's just grab that folder, drag and drop it over here into our main composition, and then we can go ahead and close this one PSD file. Now back in our main composition here, I'll press command Control t to do a free transform, and I want to rotate this counterclockwise a bit, and maybe move it down so that it's roughly centered in the composition. Okay, maybe somewhere about there. That looks pretty good. Okay, so at this point, let's go into that A4 book folder, and now we can double click on this front cover design smart object to go inside, and this is where we'll be creating our design. So the first thing we're gonna do here is add a solid color adjustment layer, and let's go ahead and use the hex value 93836F, which is this nice sort of beige tan color. And then we'll come up to the file menu once again and choose open. Let's go back to our realistic items here from Alexi and we'll choose the soup PSD file. Okay, now again, I wanna bring this over into my main document, not the main document, but the main magazine cover document. Okay, so let's just click and drag that entire soup folder over here, click okay. And then we can close this window once it's brought over. Okay. And we'll have to press Command Control T to do a free transform and scale this up quite a bit by holding Alt Option and Shift and dragging outwards from the center. Okay, now I want to place this roughly in the middle and a little bit higher than the center line in the composition. And now I'll come back up to the file menu, choose open once again. And this time, let's go ahead and bring in the garlic PSD. All right, we're going to add some of these garlic cloves to the top of our magazine cover, just in the same way that we brought in the soup. Okay, and you'll see, you'll notice a pattern that we're starting to uh, use here as we bring in each of these individual elements into our scene. Okay, free transform. Scale that up just a bit. Maybe rotate it a little pretty good. Okay, and then file open once again. This time let's bring in the crumbs. Okay, and then drag and drop that whole folder over here into the magazine cover. Okay, and this time we're going to move the crumbs below the bowl of soup. Scale it up a bit. Move it down here so that it's beneath it. And then let's just rotate it counterclockwise a little bit somewhere around there. Okay, return to the file menu, choose open once again. And this time we're looking for the spoon PSD. All right, now let's go ahead and drag this in here. Okay, and we're going to scale this up just a bit as well. Somewhere around there. Okay, and now we have a couple of items here in our scene. So I'm just gonna move the soup and the crumbs down just a little bit to give myself some breathing room at the top. And what we wanna do from here is click to add a new layer and then press T on the keyboard to switch over to the type tool. And we're just going to click somewhere here over the bowl of soup and type out the word foods in all uppercase. Now, if you don't already have it, come up to the window menu and go ahead and open the character panel 
so that we can modify our typeface here. And for this, I want to use any kind of bold sans serif condensed typeface. So I'm going to use acumen variable concept and looking for a condensed bold style. Now, uh, if you guys don't have this font, you can really use any kind of bold condensed typeface, such as Helvetica, Futura, and so forth. All right, but I think a lot of machines probably have this typeface already installed by default. I don't think this was a, a third party font. Okay, and I'm just going to make the size about 222 points. And I will also leave the fill color set to solid white. Okay, so I'm just going to place this over here and maybe decrease the tracking a little bit. So we'll change it from 20, make it zero just to tighten up the spacing a little bit there. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is turn the visibility of this layer off. Okay, add another new layer, switch back to your type tool, and this time we're going to type out the word delicious in all lowercase letters. Press Command Control A to select all. And this time we're going to use a free typeface from defont.com called Hensa. Okay, and there's a link for that in the written portion of the design tutorial so that you guys can download that for free to follow along. And once you've done that, let's go ahead and make the size about 150 point. And then click on the color here to change the fill color to the hex value FFC 600, which is this nice sort of yellow orange color. Okay, now I'm going to move this roughly over the center as well. And if you come in here for a second, you may notice that some of these letters look like they don't quite connect. So if you want to, you can just click your cursor in between those two characters and press Alt Option and the left arrow to decrease the amount of space between them or Alt Option and the right arrow to increase the space. So here I'm just going to adjust it maybe between the E and the L and maybe the, the U and the S or anything that just looks a little bit off. Alright, so at this point we can turn the visibility of our foods text back on. Select that delicious type layer. And what we're going to do is press Command Control T to do a free transform. Hold the Control key and click on the layer and then we're going to choose skew. Okay, so now what we're going to do is just hover your cursor over the right side here and just click and drag up a bit so that we can create a little bit of an angle here with the text. All right, so that's going to add a little bit of movement, make it a little bit more dynamic and interesting looking. And then I'm just going to move it down a bit. Okay, and maybe I'll select my foods text here as well and just make it a touch smaller. Okay, somewhere about there looks pretty good. All right, and what we're looking for here is an interesting way to create sort of an overlap with this text. Okay, so in that case, you may want to, you know, reposition this slightly or just, you know, think about the way that you might want it to look um, before we get into this. So I'm looking for sort of an interesting crop here. And then once you have something that you like, what we're going to do is add a layer mask to the delicious text layer. Hold the command control key and click on the layer thumbnail of the foods text layer. So that's going to activate a selection around all of the white text while you still have your layer mask selected for the script font. Now press the letter B on the keyboard to get your brush tool. Make sure that you're using a hard round brush at 100% opacity and set your foreground color to black. Now, once you've done that, what we're looking to do is to brush out some of these letters here. All right, so you can see if I start to do this here, kind of what's happening, right? And you can do that for different parts of the letters here wherever you want to create an interesting looking overlap. All right, so you don't have to do it on every letter, but you can kind of see, you know, the idea here. All right, so right off the bat, I mean, it, it looks pretty cool, but it's a little bit hard to read. So what I like to do is select the text layer that I want to hide first and lower the opacity. So I'm going to press the number five on the keyboard just to reduce the opacity so that I can kind of see through it and get an idea of, you know, where some of these letters might fall. Okay, because I, it's important that, you know, even when using effects like this, that things still remain fairly legible and readable. Okay, so you definitely want to spend some time just kind of figuring out an interesting way to set this up. So I think this will work pretty good. Let's go ahead and add that layer mask again. Hold the command control key and select the foods layer. Switch back to your brush tool. Okay, and this time, let's go ahead and brush out some of these letters like this. Okay, and I'm just kind of alternating, you know, between the white text in front and the white text in back. 
creating some interesting looking overlaps like that. Okay, and then once you're done, you can just press Command Control D to deselect all, and you should end up with something like this. So you can still read it and it creates some nice looking effects. Now, once you've done that, select the top text layer, hold the Shift key and select the foods text layer below. Press Command Control G to put it into a group folder, and then double click that group one text and just call this folder TT for title treatment. Now I'm just going to tap it over a little bit to center it there. Then press Command Control J to duplicate the layer, Command Control in the left bracket to move that copy down below the original. And now double click on the layers to bring up the layer style dialog box and add a drop shadow. For the drop shadow, we're going to bring the opacity down to about 40%, 38 or 40%. Leave it set to black, change it to multiply. You can leave use global light checked off with 30 degree angle. And then for the distance, let's go ahead and use a distance of maybe 41 pixels. Okay, the spread can be five, and the size will be 68. All right, now go ahead and click OK. So we now have two copies of our title treatment. The bottom copy has a shadow effect applied, and the top copy does not. So what we want to do here is make it so that we only see the shadow inside of the area where the bowl is, because that's the area that's you know starting to become a little bit noisy. All right, so by having the shadow there, it's, it certainly helps to bring that text forward. Okay, so what we're going to do is open this soup folder here to reveal the contents, and you'll see that if we hold the command control key and click on the layer thumbnail, it gives us a selection around the bowl. So now once we've done that, we can select this title treatment copy layer with the shadow on it and simply add a layer mask. So now that shadow is contained to the area inside of that bowl. Okay, and that is helping the text to stand out a little bit more. Now I'm going to go ahead and add another new layer, press T on the keyboard, and click down here to add some more text. Now this time I want to make the text quite a bit smaller, so I'm just going to press Command Control A to select this whole line of text, and then let's make it about 17.5 in size, and I'm going to change it to a nice serif type face, such as Baskerville Regular, which most of you guys should probably have. And we can change the tracking here to about 40, and the line spacing will be set to around 22. Now, what we're going to type in here is vegetarian cooking has never, press return to do a line break, been easier, exclamation point, this all new edition, press return to make a new line break, features over 50 meals you can line break make in 30 minutes or less exclamation point now if I press command control a you'll see that I have all this text selected and in the top toolbar here you just want to make sure that everything is centered which you can also check in the paragraph panel okay now I'm going to move this body of text over here and we want to place it below the bowl of soup so that we get a little bit of that shadow covering the text. Okay, and I'm going to nudge it down a little bit and then move the spoon down as well. So the spoon will now sort of serve as a bit of a border. Okay, but I want to call out certain parts of this text here. So to do that, I'm just going to click inside, click and drag around this first sentence here. And let's go ahead and go to our character panel and maybe just make this bold instead of uh, instead of regular okay and we'll also bold over 50 meals because we want to bring some attention to that and we'll also bold 30 minutes or less okay just to give a little bit of variation there now go ahead and create another new layer grab your type tool and we're going to now type out healthy and easy press command control a to select the whole text layer here and let's go ahead and reduce the size of this text to about 14. And instead of bold, let's use bold oblique. Okay, just to give it a little bit of movement there. And we can still leave the foreground color set to white. Now I'm going to nudge this over a bit, press Command Control J to duplicate it, hold Shift and the right arrow to slide this copy over, grab your type tool again and click inside and just type the number 30, then press Command Control A to select all. And this time, let's just make it regular bold. And we'll make the 30 a bit larger. Let's make that about 32 point size. And we can just move these characters a little bit closer together 
by clicking in between them and pressing Alt Option in the left arrow key. All right, now we're going to nudge it down a little bit so that it's roughly centered here. Now select the Healthy and Easy text layer, press Command Control J again to duplicate it, and then hold Shift and the right arrow to move this copy to the other side of the number 30. Okay, now we can just go ahead and change this to say Minute Meals. All right, so now we have it, Healthy and Easy 30 Minute Meals. All right, we can leave this placed down here at the bottom. So what I want to do is take these three layers, maybe nudge it over just a little bit, move it down to give ourselves a little bit of breathing room there. And now I will also hold the command control key and select this vegetarian cooking paragraph and press command control plus G on the keyboard to put it into a folder, double click the group one text and just rename this folder copy. Okay, and now if you want to, you can maybe move that spoon down a little bit and we basically have set up our magazine cover design. So at this point, what we're going to do is press command control S to save this file. And then once it's done saving, press command control W to close the window and return to our main mockup. All right, so now we're back in our main document here and you guys can see how this magazine cover is looking in our scene. And it looks pretty nice, especially with this nice sort of shadow effect cascading across the magazine. And uh, if you didn't, Notice, you know, I like using diagonals a lot, and I think that it tends to make designs a little bit more interesting and dynamic. So it's really working here where you have the angle of the magazine itself uh, going in the opposite direction from the angle of the shadow. So let's go ahead and continue to build out this scene a little bit more using some more of our realistic items. So go back to the file menu and choose open. And now let's go ahead and grab these artichokes. And we're going to continue to bring these into our scene in a similar way. Uh, that we brought them into our magazine cover. Okay, so grab all three of these, click and drag them into your scene, close the file, press Command Control T to do a free transform, and I'm just going to move these up a little bit, maybe reduce them in size slightly. Okay, and then press Return, come back up to the file menu, choose Open again. Okay, now let's grab our berries. Okay, and we're going to bring these in here. And what's great about these is that they all have shadows, so that really helps sell the idea and the believability of the scene. Okay, and in general, you just want to try to make sure that your shadows are at least on the same side or going in the same direction, uh, just for consistency and uniformity. Okay, come back up to File, Open, and this time let's go ahead and open the asparagus here. And we're going to now drag and drop this into our scene as well. And maybe we'll put these on the other side. Okay, Command Control T to do a free transform. I'm going to move these over to the right side instead and then hold the Control key, click on the object and choose Flip Vertical. All right, so we can flip it that way and then maybe just rotate it slightly a bit and crop it a little bit off on the right side. What's nice about this too is that when you crop things like this, it creates a little bit of tension, which, which kind of helps to not only balance things, but sort of, you know, pulls your attention in that direction a little bit and sort of alludes to the fact that there's more to the scene that we're not seeing here. Okay, now let's go ahead and open the board. Okay, and we're going to continue this process of just adding elements to the scene and making it look like sort of a, a nice, you know, colorful uh, but messy kind of kitchen countertop here or, or table, a farm table perhaps. Okay, and we want to just play around with the scale and the positioning of these elements. Okay, so this board can go in the bottom right. Okay, and then we'll go back and we'll open up our next object. This time let's go ahead and open the bread PSD. Okay, and we're going to grab all three of these folders and drag these into our main file. All right, and then we can close that, close the board, and position these in the upper right corner. And again, we can kind of play around with the idea of cropping this a little bit on the top here, just to create some more of that tension and leading the viewer's eye. All right, so once you've positioned that, we're looking pretty good so far. Let's go ahead and go back up to the file menu and choose open. 
And now we will open the cloth PSD. All right, now let's bring this into our file here. And this time I think with the cloth, uh, what I would like to do is place this below the magazine itself so that we have a little bit of an overlap there. Um, and sort of having a few of these elements interacting with the magazine cover uh, tends to help connect it and make it look a little bit more cohesive. All right, so I'm just gonna scale this up a bit. And then we'll place it below the magazine cover mock-up. All right, so there you can see that adding the cloth below the magazine just helps it feel a little bit more connected to the scene. Okay, and now we'll come back up to file, choose open once again. And now I'm thinking maybe we can add some more of the crumbs to the scene that we used in the magazine cover itself. All right, so we'll come back in here and we'll grab the crumbs. And maybe we can place these either below the cloth or on top of the cloth, just to sprinkle in a little bit more detail. All right, let's drag that in here. Press Command Control T to do a free transform. And we can just leave a little bit of that down here in the lower right. Okay, and then just press Command Control and the left bracket to move that below the cloth. Now go back to the file menu, choose Open, and then select the eggs PSD file. And we'll just drag and drop these into our document here. And then close the eggs PSD. Okay, and then do a free transform so that we can scale these up a bit. And let's go ahead and maybe crop it on the left side a little bit. Okay, somewhere about there. And then we'll just add a few more elements just to build out the scene and wrap things up. All right, so let's go ahead and grab the mushroom. And it's nice too playing with scale and having a combination of you know a few elements that are long a few elements that are you know round some are large some are small um, by having that kind of variety in here uh, it really helps to make things feel balanced and not only that but you'll notice the use of color here that we're having uh, sort of a lot of earth tones you know green and tan and beige um, while the title on the cover remains one of the brightest points with the most contrast so it's still leads your eye right into the middle of the composition. Now let's go back up to File, Open. And the last thing that we'll bring in here just to complement the title of our text is this pepper. Okay, so now we'll just click and drag this pepper into our scene. And then we can go ahead and close this PSD file. Make sure that this is on top of the magazine itself. Bring it down here to the lower left corner and then click and drag outwards while holding Alt, Option, and Shift on the keyboard just to scale it up a bit. Okay, and now we can kind of zoom out and maybe take another look at everything uh, just to kind of see how everything is feeling. And our composition is looking very nice and balanced. But if you want to, you can always come back in here, maybe adjust a few of these elements just a bit more if you want to resize anything or rotate or anything like that. Okay, and I may actually want a little bit less of this board showing in the lower right corner. So now that everything is in the scene, you just want to make those final little tweaks and adjustments. Okay, because you don't want things to be too distracting to take away from our nice magazine cover mock-up. That about wraps it up today, guys, and we have now completed our Delicious Foods magazine mock-up in Photoshop. To do this, we've used a few of the high-quality elements and freebies from the Mammoth Mock-Up Template Toolkit, featuring a massive collection of high-quality templates and items for just about any kind of design project you could need. These kind of mock-ups and templates will help your work stand out from the competition and instantly make you look more professional when potential clients can see how your designs are used and the situations they are placed in. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed this and picked up a few new tips and tricks along the way. We'd love to see how you guys use these techniques in your own work, so please go ahead and share that with us. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. My name is Eric Vasquez, and we'll see you next time.